welcome, friends, to today's program. We have a message that's just going to bless your socks off. That is, if you got any on, it's going, it's going to bless you, nevertheless. Uh, Melinda is just a very anointed teacher, preacher, and she's got something that I know you're going to be blessed by. So thank you for sharing it, Melinda. Uh, thank you, Bobby, and I just love your sense of humor. <laughs> She's got a good sense of humor, I tell you. She keeps us yeah, uh, keeps those smiles on our faces. Amen. She had to um, have. She married me. Yes, amen, amen. <laughs> well, we're so happy to be here again today with you. And uh, the title of my message today is Let It Go. And it's uh, a very timely message uh, for the day and time that we're living in. Amen. Uh, you know, everyone in life uh, has uh, had setbacks and hurts and disappointments and heartaches. And uh, but God's word says in Psalms 34, 19, it says the good man does not escape all troubles. He has them, too. But the Lord helps him in each and every one. God helps us through every one. He brings deliverance. I mean, he is our deliverer. And so what, what a great and mighty God that we serve through each one. We must learn, though to let it go. That doesn't mean that we don't have a part to play. Uh, we have to be obedient to His Word, but we cannot hold on to these hurts and offenses and things that people do to us. We can't hold on to it. We have to let it go if we want to see God move in our life. Um, through each one, we, we just need to learn to stand. We need to learn that God will turn it around if we just give it time. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it doesn't happen overnight before we see God come through for us and change a situation that seems to be so bad into something good. But trust me, God is the way maker. Amen. You may be saying yes, but you don't know, Miss Melinda, what someone's done to me. You don't know the hurt. You don't know what I've been through. No, I don't. But I do know that all mankind has been through things, some way more than others, unfortunately. But God will give you the grace and he will give you the strength to endure and come through it if you're holding on to him and putting your trust in him. He will. We're not to be the one that pays back. God has not called us to pay back what people have done to us. We're not to do evil. It says we're to do good. And it says in a scripture later that I believe I've listed here to read that it's like keeping coals of fire on their head when we do good to those who uh, abuse us and use us and do all manner of evil against us. Amen. But we have to forgive. We have to let it go. Um, Romans twelve nineteen. I want to read that scripture. Romans 12, 19 says, hold on just a second. Dear friends, never avenge yourselves. Leave that to God. For he has said that he will repay those who deserve it. Did you hear me? He said he will do it. He will take care of it. Don't take the law into your own hands. Instead, feed your enemy if he is hungry. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink, and you will be heaping coals of fire on his head. In other words, he will feel ashamed of himself for what he has done to you. Don't let evil get the upper hand, but conquer evil by doing good. I can tell you it's not easy to do something nice for someone that's hurt you. I had a situation on the job one time where I was treated very unkindly after being there for about 17 years. And uh, I'm not going into everything, but I was basically told just, well, maybe it's time for you to go get another job like I was just a nobody. And uh, it was very hurtful. And I left there and went home and I discussed it all with my husband. And we came to a decision. But also the Lord moved on me and he told me to do something for this person. And I did not want to do it. Now, you know what? It wasn't a huge thing. He told me to bake something. I think it was brownies or cookies or something like that. He told me to bake something and take it to him. I did not want to do it. I had to crucify my flesh. But I was determined, no matter how I felt, that I was going to do it. And so I did. And I took it in the next day. 
And I walked in there and I handed him a plate of them. And I said, here, I baked some brownies. I wanted to bring you some. And you could tell by his face. He was kind of blown away. And there was an engineer who was kind of a pesty type person standing in the background. He kind of walked up and saw what I did and he kind of knew what was going on in the situation. He said, better watch out. She might have put poison in them. <laughs> well, you know, he was just joking. But this person that had hurt me basically stood up and defended me. And he said, you shouldn't have said that. She would never do a thing like that. Mm -hmm. And so I turned and walked out. But I did what God told me to do. And, you know, you have to just leave it there. And God worked things out for me. He took care of me. He always does. But I was obedient to the Word. And when you're obedient to the Word, God always honors you. There will not be a time that He will not honor you for doing the right thing in every situation. So, anyway, uh, then I also want to read 13.10. 13.10, love does no wrong to anyone. That's why it fully satisfied all of God's requirements. It is the only law you need. Because if you're following the love, if you're loving people and following that, you're not going to be doing wrong to them. You're not going to be talking against them, stealing from them, or, uh, you know, backstabbing them, whatever it is. You're, you're not... When you're going to walk in love, you fulfilled all the rest of the law. That's what God's Word says. That's why it says love one another. So I want to just go through a few things that happens to you and that will affect you when you don't let go and you're holding on to all this, these offenses and hurts and disappointments in your life. Number one, it's going to drain your energy. Number two, it's going to sour your attitude. Number three, it limits your creativity. Number four, it contaminates your vision. Number five, it hinders you. This is a big one. It hinders you from fulfilling the destiny that God has for your life. Number six, it affects your relationships with others. Have you ever heard somebody say, I have, I've heard somebody say this, I will never let anyone do this to me again. I will never trust anybody and I will never love again. I've heard people say it. And you know what? I'm thoroughly convinced that that, could, that hindered their destiny that God had for them. Because you know what? The God I serve, He has good things. He wants to do good things in our life, no matter what we've done. He forgets all that. When we repent and move forward, God has a good plan. It doesn't stop His plan for us. He has good things, but if we continue to not let go and hold on, it affects what He wants to do in our future. So we, we've got to let go. we got to let go. Living your life out of a wounded place in your soul, and that's what needs to be healed, is your soul. Your soul is your will, your mind, and your emotions. They need to be healed from that. And I'm praying today that God does that for you. But it will hinder wherever you go in life. You'll take it with you. It causes a great insecurity to come into your heart. You don't trust people anymore. Sometimes people just back off. They don't even want to be involved or even have any type of relationships. They don't want to have trust friends anymore. Uh, uh, they don't want to uh, find maybe another mate again or uh, marry again or whatever. But how you handle these setbacks determines your future. And if you don't get healed from these emotional scars, these emo emotional hurts, it's going to cause you to bleed on other people. It's going to affect other people's life because it's affected yours. You'll replay those hurts over and over and over. So I'm asking you, don't get stuck. Don't get stuck in the rut of unforgiveness. You got to let it go. God is the one that can heal you from these emotional hurts in your body, in your soul. He can heal them if you're willing to forgive, but you got to be willing to forgive. So what does God's Word say about forgiveness? 
How many times do I need to forgive somebody, especially if they keep doing the same thing over and over and over again? I know that a lot of you have this. I, I know I've had people do it over and over and over again. It gets old. And you just think, God, how, many, how, how much can I take? How much can I take? <laughs> but God says, I, God says, you got to keep forgiving. <laughs> you got to keep forgiving and praying for that person. Let's look at Matthew chapter 18. And God's going to tell us what he says about it. Matthew 18, verse 21. Peter came to him and asked him, Sir, how often should I forgive a brother who has sinned against me? Seven times? No, Jesus replied. Seventy times seven. Basically, there is never any end to it. There's never any end to us forgiving. It never stops. We have to continue to do it through our lives. It's very critical. In fact, it's one of the most critical things that can affect your whole destiny, even your salvation. So let's look at Matthew 6.15. Matthew, Matthew 6, 15 says, Your heavenly Father will forgive you if you forgive those who sin against you. But if you refuse to forgive them, He will not forgive you. So do you understand that your whole salvation depends on it? There'll be people that won't be in the kingdom of God because they held for unforgiveness and hate in their heart. They won't make it because God didn't, won't forgive them because they didn't forgive. So your salvation rests upon it. That's how important it is. And you know what? For me, nothing is worth hell. Nothing, nothing anybody could ever do. And you know, I haven't escaped hurts. I haven't escaped disappointments. I've had some and some have been pretty difficult. But I chose to forgive because nothing's worth it. Not anything, not money, not, uh, not popularity, not anything. Nothing is worth it to me to miss eternity with my heavenly Father. So you got to let it go. 1 John 3.15, listen to what this says, is very important. If you hate each other, if you hate somebody today, you are murderers. That's what the Word says. And we know that murderers do not have eternal life. You won't have eternal life. Well, I know some of you are saying, I just can't. I can hear it. I just can't. But you can with God's help. All you have to do is say, just be willing, saying, God, I will today to forgive. Help me. I can't. I feel like I can't, but I will to do what your word says, but you've got to help me. And I guarantee you, he will help you do it. Amen. Now, I want to give an example of someone in the Bible who had many struggles, many trials and tribulations, many heartaches, ups and downs. But he learned to let it go. He learned to trust God because God said about this particular person. And again, I'm talking about King David. He said, this is a man after my own heart. And don't you want to be a man after God's own heart? Don't you want to be a woman yes. after God's own heart? Yes, we do. We want to be after God's heart. But King David, and, and this starts, begins in, in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 16. And I encourage you, go read Samuel. It's, Samuel's a, it's, it's a book that will inspire you. It's a book that will make your heart hurt to see some of the things that happened to David. But God was faithful to David. He was faithful to him. Uh, he was just a young boy. His father was Jesse from the tribe of Judah. And David was the youngest of eight of eight. There were eight in his family, and he was the youngest. And David was just a humble shepherd. And he would go out and tend the sheep. And that was what he, he was told to do by, I guess, his father and his mother. One day, the Lord spoke to the prophet Samuel, and he said, I want you to go to the house of Jesse. And he has some sons, and I've called one. You're going to anoint one of his sons, and uh, 
he's going to become the king of Israel one day. So Samuel, as obedient as he, as he always was to God, a great prophet of God, he went to Jesse's house. Now I want you to listen. He told him, he said, I need for you to call your sons. Guess what Jesse did? He called seven sons. Seven. He didn't call eight. He called seven. Where did David rank? <laughs> David kind of ranked low boy on the totem yeah. pole, didn't he? he sure did. <laughs> but he called all seven of those sons. And Samuel went down the line and he said, no, 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 no. God's not called any of these. But yet his father just knew that, oh, maybe the oldest one he's calling him or, oh, it's got to be the next one or the next one. No, he said, God hasn't called any of these. Don't you have another son? Oh, yes. Where is he? Well, he's out tending the sheep. Well, I need for you to call him. So here comes David, a little ruddy, good-looking boy, it said. Here he came. Samuel stood before him. He said, this is the one, the most likely, the youngest, the smallest, the one who his brothers, you know, kind of looked down on, as we're going to see. He was the one God called. God, God told Samuel, he says, I don't look. I don't look at the outside. I look at the heart. So, David was anointed at that time, even though he was rejected. You understand, there was rejection there. He had to face some rejection, but he didn't let that stop him. So then later, uh, he was called to play his instrument because he was a very skilled musician, and he was called to play an instrument for King Saul, who was tormented by evil spirits. David went there and played. He tried to kill him several times. He took a javelin and threw it, trying to pin him to the wall, trying to kill him, and David escaped. So here's a man that he's going to be replacing one day, but yet he went there as a humble servant to do what he was called to do, and he, was, and he tried to kill him. Okay, there's more to the story. All right, then David's brothers goes down to war. Three of them went because the Philistines were trying to war make war against Israel. His father said to him, go down to your brothers, go there and see how they're doing and come back and report it to me. So he found somebody to take care of the sheep and he get down there. He gets down there and listen to what they said. It says, uh, well, David's brothers were jealous. We know that they were jealous, but they, listen to this, they rebuked David. They rebuked him as three brothers for leaving the sheep and they called him in the Living Bible, a cocky brat, you cocky brat, you just came here to see the battle. You're just full of pride. This is what they said to David. Did da you know what David could have done? David could have got up right then and ran home and, 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 and been so hurt and cried and weep, but he didn't. He didn't. You know what he did? He, went, he, he, he stayed there and listened to what was being said, and he said, I'm going to do something about this. A little boy, I'm going to do something about this. And he went up to King Saul and said, I'll kill the giant. And he killed the giant, cut his head off. That's what David did. But what if, he, what if he'd let that rejection and that hurt stop him from moving forward? No, he let it go. He let it go because he knew God had a plan. Greater than he could see, God had a plan. So I want to say this, that 13 years David ran from King Saul. 13 years he ran. He was in caves. He was in the wilderness. He had many times that he could have killed King Saul. But he said, I will not touch God's anointing. He said, I will not take the law into my own hands. I will not repay evil for the good I'm doing. I'm not going to do evil to him. He could have killed him. He could have wiped him out. One of his assistants, his armor bearer said, kill him now, kill him now, do it. You've got a perfect chance. He said, no, I won't do it. He never lifted his hand against him. Then time goes on. And David, you know, he had many, many heartaches in his, in his life. He, he, uh, he married Bathsheba, took her, uh, you know, uh, uh, had her husband murdered. Uh, they had a baby together and the baby dies. And then, you know, all, he goes through all this turmoil, all this turmoil because he failed. But he repented and cried out to God and said, please forgive me for what I've done. I've sinned against you and you alone. And God forgave him. Then he had a beautiful son named Solomon, Solomon that was the wisest, the richest king that ever lived. Okay, so then some more time goes on, and what happens? Well, 
uh, Absalom committed high treason, his son that he loved so dearly. He turned the hearts of the people against David. He had his brother Amnon murdered because he raped his sister. He went into his father's house on top of his house and slept with David's concubines for all of Israel to see. That's pretty heavy, isn't it? Yeah. Have, have has any of us experienced all this? No, no. But let me tell you, he had a lot of reason to say, I quit. I give up. I'm not doing this anymore. And hold bitterness and anger and, and not let it go and unforgiveness. But David didn't. He forgave his own son for all that he did. He forgave Absalom. In fact, when they went out, his men went out, he begged him. He said, do not touch Absalom. Do not harm my son Absalom. He kept saying it to him. Don't harm the young man. And even though they weren't obedient, I mean, he forgave Absalom for what he did to him. He forgave him. His heart was broken. Let me tell you, as a parent, your heart would have to be broken. But that didn't let him stop from fulfilling the call and destiny that David had to rule over Israel. David repented. He, had, he repented of his sins and his shortcomings. He, ne he refused to touch God's anointed, but he let God be the avenger in his life. And he encouraged himself in the Lord and did not live in self-pity. But he got up and kept moving forward. So I want you to know today, God will take care of you when you let go and let God. God will make it up to you when people do wrong, wrong you in different ways. Believe me, He will. I'm still standing and believing for some things to happen even today from wrongs just done this year. Hallelujah. It never stops. The enemy is always going to come and use people to do things to us. But you know what? It gratifies me so much because I just say, God, here it is. I know you're going to make it up to me. And I just got peace. And isn't that a wonderful place to be? Peace that God is going to take care of it and make it up to you? Yeah. God knows how to lift you up when people try to push you down and destroy you. Despite every injustice, God can still do remarkable things in your life. You can keep going higher and higher in God when you let it go and you forgive. Forgive for your sake so that you can walk in freedom and joy and victory. Don't give the enemy a seat at your table. Don't let him eat your lunch. Don't be ignorant of his devices. It's all a plan for you to take that bait and be in uh, unforgiveness and hate people and not fulfill your destiny in God. Don't let the toxic waste of shame and guilt and remorse and unforgiveness and anger control your life. God has better things for you. Great, great better things. Let it go. Let it go. I want to share something uh, that I saw on the internet that fit right in with what I'm teaching today. And it's a word from the Lord through uh, a prophet of God. Listen to what the Lord said. I would have pull, pulled Joseph out, out of that pit, out of the prison, out of the pain. But I would have cheated nations out of the one God would use to deliver them from famine. I would have pulled David out out of Saul's spear-throwing presence, out of the caves he hid away in, out of the pain of rejection, I would have cheated Israel out of a God-hearted king. I would have pulled Esther out, out of being snatched from her own family, out of being placed in a position she never asked for, out of a path of a vicious, power-hungry foe. I would have cheated the people out of a woman of God that was used to save their very lives. I would have pulled Jesus off the cross. Off of the cross, off of the road that led to suffering and pain, off of the path that would mean nakedness and beatings and nails and thorns. I would have the entire, I would have cheated the entire world out of a Savior, out of salvation, out of eternity filled with no more suffering and no more pain. Isn't that something? Isn't that word just something that's so wow, powerful? That was strong. I want to end today with a, with a short little story. And this story is about an eagle. And an eagle was flying in the sky. And an eagle went down and he saw an animal. And he picked up this little animal and it was a mole. As he's carrying this mole, the mole bit the eagle. And then the eagle began to decline. The eagle began to uh, come down, down, down. And when it got down to the ground, the eagle died. And the mole ran free. Someone found the eagle and they took it and had a veterinarian uh, examine the eagle to see what it died of, what the cause of death was. 
After the veterinarian looked over the eagle, he determined that the eagle died because it punctured, the, the bite punctured his heart, caused him to lose blood pressure, and that's why he kept declining and declining and hit the ground, and he died. He should not have been carrying the mole. Why? Because they don't eat moles. Are you carrying something today that's killing you? Are you, kill, are you carrying unforgiveness? Because it will kill you eventually. It will destroy your life if you don't let it go. You need to let today, let the day be your turning point by letting go of things from the past that's bringing such hurt and destruction to your life. Release it and let God take you to, and soar to new heights in Him today. That's what He wants. That's what He wants for you. I want to take a time to pray right now for yes. people. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, today Bobby and Frank and I agree that the people that are listening to this message, all those who are holding any type of unforgiveness or hate in their heart toward others, God, that they would let it go. God, give them the strength and the courage to do that today. Just say, I let it go, Father. I let it go. I don't know how to do it, but I do. I, with my mouth, I just say out loud, I'll, I'll begin here. I want to let it go. I want to forgive. Help me to do it. And God will, sister and brother, He will do it. He will help you to forgive. And as He does, God will forgive you. And you're going to see such freedom and joy and good things come in your life when you do. Amen and amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Oh, that's a wow. wonderful message, isn't it? Praise God. You know, we can such, all such benefit from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have baggage that collects yes. on us. Yes, And we have to, to let it go and clean house and get yes. rid of it. Yes. Because if we don't, we're going to be so weighted down by all this baggage that we can't keep going. That's right. You're right, Mommy. It's a weight, a heavy yeah. weight. You need to ask Jesus to come into your heart today and be born again. That's that's truly the beginning. And He can help you have a that's new right. life and yeah. forgive and move forward in Him. Amen. That's if He right. forgave if He forgave you, we can forgive others. Amen. And I invite you to ask God, is there anybody that you need to forgive that you don't know about it? Amen. He'll reveal it to you and he'll hear you as you as you choose to forgive them. Yes, he will. Well, it's been a joy being with you again. Amen. Today. Amen. 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 It's always we so love our times with good. you. Yeah. This is Bobby and Frank and Melinda saying God loves you, my friend, and so do we.